proceed. Honorable nominated member, I understand you. Yes, please. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. Um, I have a first question on the face of this document and the face of the motion before us. Um, on the motion, we are considering um, USD loan amounting to $47,770,000. Now, on the document I have before me, this document we are considering, the Republic of the Gambia and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, it states on page 2, section B, that the amount of the loan is $4,255,000 and the grant is $17,020,000. I just want the Honorable Minister to explain where the figure of $47 million comes from, just for us to understand, because I can't see that in this document. And this will bring me to page 13 of the document, Schedule 2. Um, this would make me concur with the honorable members who have stated early on that it is indeed very necessary for us to be giving a considerable amount of time, enough time to consider um, these documents because even them have, have experts would tell you how long it took them before they could reach an agreement like this. So for us to deliver and do our jobs as parliamentarians, it is of utmost important that we take our time and scrutinize these documents before us. And I'll tell you why. Um, schedule two gives you a breakdown of how, not the 47 million, because that is not in this document, the minister would explain, of how this 17 million grant and this 4 million loan is going to be distributed. And I don't think, uh, I think most of the members did not even arrive at this page based on the time we have. It says on consultation services, consulting services, 4.1 million US dollars out of the grant will go to consultation and 550,000 US dollars out of the loan is going to consultation. Who are we consulting? I think this is the first problem we have with grants and loans coming into this country. It's becoming a reputation that a chunk, a large chunk of the loan, instead of it going to the persons it is intended for, goes to consultation and grants goes to consultation. Don't we have experts at the Ministry of Agriculture? Why do you need, and it's described, this category is described as includes expenditures related to national technical assistance, international technical assistance, studies and trainings and workshop. What exactly are we consulting about? You as experts saw that there was a need for this project. Because you've done enough consultations, I would assume. Because you've already identified what the problems are, I would assume. What more consultation do you need? Talk less of international consultations. Why would we spend at least 4.6 million US dollars on consultation for what? I really need this explained because I don't understand. Why there is need for international consultation and we are spending this much money on consultation. And I will just compare the figures. If you look at what is being spent on consultation and what is being spent on the grants and subsidies, you are spending more on consultation than what you are spending on grants and subsidies. Because on the grants of subsidies, you are spending four million ten thousand US dollars out of the loan amount. Out, out of the grant amount and 1.3 million out of the loan amount. Does this make any sense? These are the questions we should ask ourselves. And does the need for us to take our time to consider these documents? It is really important, honorable members. We are saying that we have opened a new page, but I don't see the new page. Or maybe it's a new page written all over with what has been happening in the past. Because really, 
if we are not, we cannot even identify these issues as honorable members at this point. Are we really doing our jobs? We should ask ourselves. And this will take me to another important issue. And that is category two, which includes, they say, expenditures related to equipment, materials, and vehicles. Some honorable members mentioned this issue. Category two, it's another amount of 4,150,000 out of the grant and 935,000. This will bring us to 5 million something dollars, which is going to be spent on equipment and materials and vehicles. If this project is going to complement the NEMA project and there are already vehicles, why do we need to buy more vehicles? What vehicles? I understand the equipment when it's farming equipment and materials. But why do we need to buy more vehicles? And I would like the Honorable Minister to please explain this because I want to understand. And then you come to salaries and allowances, 1.9 million, again, US dollars, 35,000 US dollars. Don't we already have staff in the ministry? How much more staff do we need to employ to implement this project? Where is the experience of people working at the ministry have, have gained over the years in regards to projects like this? It is time for you to deliver. Why do we need to employ new staff if we already have staff in the ministry paid from the consolidated fund? Why can't this money go straight to the women cafes we are talking about? And this brings me to my next issue of the women cafes. How are these cafes going to be identified? This is an issue we really need to talk about. Who identifies these cafes? Is it going to be a requirement for them to be registered? How do we know who is who? If you give to the monies to these CAFOs, is it going to be grant to these CAFOs? Are you giving loans to these CAFOs? Who would be these people? Are there not existing gardening women gardens already? Why do we have to establish new CAFOs? I will take you to my point on the page seven. Um, the, the fourth line on the, the fourth to last line on the page seven on paragraph eight states, a total of 40 new women CAFOs and six cooperative societies shall be established. Why does the fund need to establish new CAFOs? Are there not existing women gardening CAFOs already? What are you looking to gain in this regard? Why is this necessary? Honorable members, I think this is why we needed time to consider in detail this document before us. Because I know most of us haven't gone through the last page of the document. I'm not saying because we can't, I'm saying because there was not enough time given to us. And this is really important. If we say and truly believe that we are doing this for the interest of this woman guardianess, for the interest of the Gambia at large, I think it is our responsibility to scrutinize these documents before us. Who is rushing us? I can confirm that if the Honorable Minister of Finance and the Honorable Minister of Agriculture go back to the partners and tell them, look, wait a minute, the deadline you've given us is too short. Because our honorable members of parliament, the National Assembly, require more time to scrutinize this document. Those people will not have anything but respect for you. Because they will know you respect this institution. And they will know this institution is indeed doing the job that we are here for. So it is to me an excuse that the deadline is fast approaching. This could be renegotiated. This, if if they, these people really want to help you, why would the deadline of Fort Mart matter if it is something as important as the scrutiny of the National Assembly? They would really appreciate that because they would know their money is not going to waste and the National Assembly will be doing their job scrutinizing this project if they are taking time to scrutinize this document. So I really think, honorable members, there is no need to rush. We should take our time to go through this document and identify more issues than those that I have just raised moving forward. I beg to take my seat. Thank you.